Hey guys, welcome to Interesting Video on Wild Rift. So today we are back with a Caitlyn updated complete guide for patch 4.4 onwards and this is a pretty exciting one because this is the first time we're going to be using the new item Magnetic Blaster. So of course before we get into the build and such, of course I'm going to refer you guys to Caitlyn's basic guide for her skills, leveling order, tips and tricks as well as some combos that I will put up in the cards above. Alright, so without further ado, let's jump straight into the loadout, starting off with the items. So it's a pretty standard 1-2 combo for ADCs nowadays. You go your for your Gutness Greaves, it straight into your Bloodthirst. So of course, the, the combo of these two items is going to give you a total of 90 AD as well as a combined total of 19% physical fan. So it's really kind of a, a Bloodthirster meta in the ADC lane. There is sort of a Dust Blade. Um, kind of thing going on as well, but we'll be covering that in future videos, but basically it's pretty standard You get a lot of AD and Omni Vamp from the Greaves, you get a lot of Omni Vamp as well as, um, not Omni Vamp, Physical Vamp uh, As well as AD from the Bloodthirster, and of course you also get the additional AD and Attack Speed when you're above 50% health So, um, obviously Caitlyn, you know, she's really dominant in lane and getting this huge amount of AD in the earlier stages of the game Is gonna help you a lot in terms of bullying your opponent and making their life, uh, you know, really hard to play in lane so, anyways, next up is where the interesting part comes in. So, you get Magnetic Blaster. Now, there are pros and cons of Magnetic Blaster. The main con of Magnetic Blaster is the fact that it doesn't actually give you any AD at all. So, it's kind of, um, it's kind of like an item that gives you a lot of utility, but it doesn't actually give you any AD whatsoever. However, I think in Caitlyn's case, it is worth it because her, her base stats are already really high and she already has, you know, these first couple of items for the AD. So what you get is the crit rate, obviously you get the attack speed, um, but what you're really after is the passive. So basically, long story short, this is going to be static shift plus rapid fire cannon combined. So what it's going to give you is when you charge it up to 100 stacks by moving, you're going to get um, an increased range like rapid fire cannon, but when you hit... Uh, an enemy with that rapid fire cannon shot is gonna give you the static shift effect which, where it's gonna bounce lightning up to five at, up to five enemies and it can crit as well so this is really useful for Caitlyn mostly because of the rapid fire cannon effect of course the static shift effect is nice to have on top uh, but basically this allows you to bully people even more now you already have the longest range but you're still kind of in range for certain abilities of course so with the magnetic blaster with that extra range you pretty much should be safe from majority of abilities in the game of course there are still those like long range slash global abilities that you will always be in in, uh, in range of but in general majority of those kind of like um Hard CC or abilities you want to be scared, or you need to be scared of. Generally, you're gonna be out of range for all of those, and you can just poke them down with the, these rapid fire cannon or such magnetic blaster. I guess you, you could you could say shots. Then of course you go into the IE gives you one, once again more AD crit as well as increases your crit damage, and finally you top it off with the mole reminder, which is of course going to be giving you the armor penetration, the crit, as well as of course the Grievous Wounds, lovely um, new change to the item. Now finally for the last item, you have the same suspect options, most of the time it's going to be GA, um, AD, armor, and the revive, but you also of course have a lot of other options. Your offensive option is going to be Runan's Hurricane, you can technically go for this to split your, your shots into three, it is um, generally not really associated as a Caitlyn item, but it still works very well, gives you AD, gives you attack speed, and allows you to attack three people at uh, one time and it's gonna crit all the time because you already are at 100% crit so if you don't need any defensive tools you can go for this one but I normally recommend going for defensive tools like a garden angel or our next one more Mamorius. of course this is gonna be really really useful against um, you know all the magic damage dealers and especially you know if the mage mage is getting a huge buff in this patch this might come in really handy of course gives you magic resist AD as well as that magic damage shield and your next option Steric Gauge mainly for the shield. So, the the, the Steric gauge, gauge of course gives you 400 HP, gives you more um, base attack damage as well as gives you the shield. This is basically a better version of Shield Bow since basically Shield Bow the main benefit of it is is that it gives you crit and gives you the shield. But Steric Gauge is gonna give you a I think slightly larger shield, but it's gonna give you health and it's gonna give you more AD, which overall is better. Um, then shield bow and your last another option is going to be a really interesting one is actually going to be crown now crown is actually a very viable last item option for adcs because despite the stats not being very useful like you don't really care about you know magic pen you don't really care about ability power i mean health is kind of useful mana is kind of useful abilities also can be kind of useful although it's not really the stats you love but it, it, it at least helps but 
Um, the ability power and the magic penetration doesn't help whatsoever. But what does help is the safeguard passive. Of course, you don't care too much about the poise passive. Um, you probably can't proc that anyway unless you're a certain ADCs like Ezreal or, or, or Zeri, for example. But uh, if you're a Caitlyn, you can make use of that safeguard ability, that spell shield, giving you the um, Banshee's Veil passive to, to negate the hostile ability and giving you 1.5 seconds of 70% damage reduction can be absolutely amazing and game changing on ADCs as well. So this is actually a very viable last item option for ADCs and you know you might see me build it you know in, in a future gameplay, not in this particular one, but you might see me build it in a future gameplay and you will understand why. So anyways, um, for the runes, Lethal Tempo because the only attack speed we have uh, in this build is actually going to be the Magnetic Blaster, so Lethal Tempo is going to work out great. Um, I have seen some people still want to go for Conqueror here and then go for Alacrity here. You could do that as well, but I don't think the attack speed from Magnetic Blaster is enough. I like taking Lethal Tempo. Of course, we have Brutal here for the on-hit uh, damage on champions. We have Giant Slayer because most of the time, um, you know, most of the time nowadays, people are going to be tanky. So Giant Slayer, as we see from like the runes now, it's generally going to give you more value than than Coup de Grasse, so you should be taking Giant Slayer majority of the time. You have Bloodline, of course, for even more Omni Vamp. You could also go for Alacrity here if you want more attack speed, but I think that this is good enough. And then we go for either Bone Plating or uh, Overgrowth for the defensive options. And finally, we take Flash and we like to take Ghost. The main reason why you don't generally take Exhaust on Caitlyn is because you're generally supposed to be far away and you shouldn't really be in Exhaust range anyways. However, if you, if you do have kind of assassins who want to jump on top of you, then taking exhaust could be an option as well. But with all that out of the way, let's jump straight into talking about our gameplay. Alrighty, so let's move on to talking about our gameplay itself. Uh, but of course, as usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Any questions, queries, or remarks, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I will be, of course, sure to address them. So, um, as I mentioned, Magnetic Blaster, I think it's a pretty good item for Caitlyn. I've tried it on other champs like Tristana and Jinx. I didn't really like it because I always felt that there were better items like Navori on Tristana or like Phantom Dancer for Jinx. Uh, in fact, I didn't actually mention this in the build, but if you don't want to build Magnetic Blaster, you can actually replace it with another attack speed item like Phantom Dancer, um, you know, most likely. I mean, you wouldn't want to replace it with Rune and Hurricane at the beginning or anything like that, but basically you can replace it with Phantom Dancer if you don't quite like it. So here we're playing Caitlyn Lux, which is a very, what's supposed to be a very dominant lane because basically Caitlyn has long range to poke, Lux can poke with her E as well, and the moment Lux hits a Q, you should be able to combo with Caitlyn traps and you should be able to deal a lot of damage. Whereas we're against a Varus Alistar, of course, um, Alistar can't really do very much in lane except go all in, whereas Varus is kind of like a poke champion, so doesn't really work out. Here Lux hits a really nice um, route and I'm able to finish off the Varus. Now here Alistar actually does an amazing job, not sure if it was on purpose or not, but he actually cancelled my E when I was mid-animation, so the E would have actually allowed me to dash out of the tower, but uh, he was actually able to knock me out of my E dash, which caused me to take an additional tower shot and die, so really uh, nice work by the Alistar there, especially if that was intentional. And here, uh, despite that, we do get the kill, um, whereas Alistar got the kill on the other side, so it's not too bad, we are able to pick up our uh, Gladness Grease, which will of course give us uh, our first kind of mini spike in the game. So here you can see we're going to be playing pretty aggressive because generally what you want to do is you want to not really keep them shoved in under tower, but you want to be constantly auto-attacking them, uh, especially, you know, because Alistair can't really do anything except this, um, and you just want to basically just keep on poking. Uh, Alistair wants to go all in, whereas Varus wants to poke, so basically it's a little bit of a disjointed lane until Varus hits level 5 and he can actually follow up with the ulti on Alistair's all in. So in the meantime, you should be kind of zoning them away from minions, making sure that they, you know, feel the hurt, and make sure that they're constantly losing health and are at risk of pretty much dying. Now, there is a situation where you can shove them all the way under tower and harass them to the point that it's a free dive with or without your jungler, but, you know, it's kind of situational. So again, Lux hits a nice, nice route, uh, allows me to get a free full damage Q because it doesn't actually pass through anything, and then follow up with another auto. Now, Alistar is actually reset, and Lux is also going to reset because she doesn't have mana. So, what this means is Alistar is going to reach the lane before Lux since he actually reset earlier. So, this also means that, especially because we don't know where the jungler is, we can uh, we cannot play too aggressive. But we still want to try to get in poke, as you guys can see over there. So, you guys might also notice that I actually transferred my control ward over here down into the river, which Alistar actually spots out here and tries to go for it. But because Varus isn't there to cover, I'm just getting like free auto attacks on him while he's trying to clear the ward. So, he ends up not actually doing that. 
Now here Lux actually goes for a roam on mid, which is actually pretty bad because um, as I mentioned, as Lux Caitlyn, you don't really want to roam. You want to stay in the lane and dominate the lane. So Lux actually roams mid, doesn't actually get anything really done and is going to come back up here. So it's a little bit of a waste of a roam and waste of our lane pressure because since they know Lux is in mid, they can actually afford to play more aggressively. So thankfully they don't exactly do that, so it's still kind of fine. But here, once again, we're getting down poke. It doesn't matter if it's on the Varus or Ezreal. If it's on uh, uh, on the Varus or Alistar, what am I talking about? Uh, if it's on the Alistar, you know, it's still is okay because it dissuades him from going in. Because if you're a low HP as an engager, it go it's going to always dissuade you from going in because you're always going to be at risk of dying if you go in. Here, really nice Lux combo onto two. Here, I'm going to ult the Alistar for the kill. And uh, for some reason, Alistar actually flashes, which is kind of funny. <coughs> because... I believe that whoever I ulted there was going to die, so if he tried to flash behind Varus, he would have, he would have actually killed his Varus, and I would have actually prefer, preferred to have targeted the Varus there, but Varus slipped out of vision, so I'm going to target the Alistar instead, and likely Alistar would have blocked for Varus, although judging by his flashing behavior, I don't know if that would have even been the case, because he looked like he was about to try to kill his Varus, because uh, obviously you can't flash away from a Caitlyn now, unless Katarina was actually there and he was trying to flash towards the Katarina, so we don't really know. Anyways, don't need to overthink it, we're just gonna jump back into what we're doing right now, which is continuing to harass the enemy laner. So here, Alistair goes in, um, Varus somehow manages to miss the ult there, and here we're in an okay spot because basically Alistair has used all his spells, Varus has basically used his spells as well, so now Alistair ult runs out and we're basically just running him down, Lux finishes him off, and here, uh, Lux tries to flash forward for the root, uh, ends up missing it, and Varus actually flashes late. But because the root doesn't hit, he still is able to, of course, get the flash off. So overall, that's fine. Uh, we get a free kill, basically, um, and Varus, Varus is forced to flash as well. We still have our flash here. So here, I'm just sticking around to pick up that one last tower plate with solo goal as well. And here, I'm trying to help my team out with the dragon, but it turns out they don't really need my help. They're actually all going to the Herald. Whereas I want to reset for Bloodthirster anyway, it's fine because the ADC generally shouldn't be going to the Herald anyways because you want to always stay in your lane. So here I spot Varus going to Herald. So here I have two options here. My first option is to join my team at Herald and make it a 5v5 at Herald. My second option is to go for Plates. Now there's pros and cons to both options. Of course the pros of going for Plates is it's guaranteed goal and uh, you know, there you are at no risk of dying because the entire enemy team is at the Herald. So that's exactly what I choose to do, which is the safe conservative option. Now, the option number two, which can swing the game, is to go to the Herald with your team. Because if you manage to win a fight at Herald, it's going to be a lot more impactful because you are, you're going to get a bunch of kills. You're going to kill the enemy and possibly get Herald as well. But um, as you can see, this uh, as you can see, our entire team actually died uh, at the Herald. And because we actually went for the plate play, we are actually able to finish off the entire tower. Uh, which nets us a lot of gold. If we take a look at our goal now, we're nearly at 6k gold, whereas everyone else on our team is only at 4 point something um, gold. So we get 3 full waves, we get the full tower with all the plates as well, and in my opinion, that's a really, really good deal. Uh, and my team respawns only to get triple killed by Katarina. So this game is kind of going out of hand because Katarina has decided to actually go for Magi's as her first item. And this normally is not too big of a problem for most champs, but uh, because she actually got like a bunch of kills, she now has like a lot of stacks on her mana. Obviously, I would not know how many stacks exactly she has, and the the replay tool doesn't actually show uh, how much stacks she has. But I think that at this point, is definitely at least double digit uh, stacks here. So a really scary Katarina. Uh, obviously, Katarina, you know, is gonna just destroy us completely because we are, of course, Caitlyn, and there's nothing much we can do against her. Now here, Lux gets dived, and I'm about to get dived here too. So I've dodged the Varus out, which is very predictable that it's coming. Um, Katarina obviously wants to jump in. We dodge the Varus, and we're gonna pop the ghost here to just run away, basically, because if we stay under the tower for any longer, Alistair is gonna tank it, and Katarina and Varus can easily kill us. So we managed to escape with our lives on this particular occasion. And uh, only at the cost of a ghost. So that's once again another um, usage of your ghost. That you know, if you had exhaust, then you were gonna die. You exhaust Katarina, you'll still die to to, to like the Varus and the Alistar anyway. So uh, ghost coming in clutch there to save our lives. So here, uh, you know, basically the situation here is. We are the most fed member on our team, and Katarina is the most fed member on their team. Katarina is actually, uh, you know, 1k go up on us. So basically, as of now, it's basically a, a kind of fight as to whether me or Katarina can carry carry harder at this point. 
However, Katarina has a definite advantage here, because if I if two of us go for each other, Katarina wins that 10 out of 10 times. Like Caitlyn cannot 1v1 a Katarina, whereas Katarina can 1v1 one shot a Caitlyn. So that's kind of the issue here, which is that we are kind of at a disadvantage in the direct matchup against the most fed enemy member. But the advantage we have is that uh, we have range, whereas Katarina does not. So it, there, there could be situations where we could stay far away and try to uh, use our range to our advantage while Katarina is trying to focus other people. And that's pretty much what we're going to have to do for the entire rest of the match. Because if we get anywhere near there, uh, you know, we are going to get one shot by her. So here you can see the ward in the bush. So we also saw a Varus arrow. So we know that they're kind of all in this general area. You don't want to go in there to clear the ward because it could be a trap. They could be in the bush and your life for a ward, uh, for a ward's life, not a deal I would take any day of the week. So they could also be in our jungle, which is why I control warded that bush there to make sure that not, they're not, um, you know, coming from behind and uh, flanking us while we're busy clearing minions. That's really, really crucial. Now we see four people uh, in the top lane here. So this is a opportunity to make a very quick play to push down the mid lane tower. Now we need to do this quickly before they come. I'm trying to ping Lux to help me out here, but Lux is having none of it. Now I don't really blame her because this is a little bit risky. You can see. Uh, as we finish this off, Alistar and Varus have just uh, actually arrived. I'm just not taking any chances. I'm popping the ghost and getting straight out of there. I'm still 1k go behind the Katarina, but we're making really good progress in terms of getting ourselves fed enough to a point where we can carry our team. Uh, really, at this point, the main issue is, of course, Katarina, but other people like uh, Yone and Gwen are not to be ignored either. And here, it's pretty funny because uh, I actually barely managed to back to prevent myself from actually getting dove there by the entire enemy team here. And you can see that uh, on the reset, I'm able to pick up the magnetic gun. And now I'm just free firing here for the moment. I'm getting away from the Alistar. Alistar, not sure what he's really doing here. I managed to pick up the kill on the Yone and the Alistar. Now the Gwen and Varus is stuck in no man's land. He dies. Now the crucial part about this fight is Master Yi was actually able to kill the Katarina. Uh, it was actually able to kill the Katarina before I got to the fight, so I was at no threat of getting killed by the Katarina, so that was pretty crucial uh, in my opinion, which allowed me to clean up the rest of the fight, of course, with my completed items. And here I'm also able to clean up this tower and another wave, so you can see I'm now getting really, really fed. Now, I actually have more gold in Katarina for the first time in the match since both of us got fed, so that's a really, really good sign. And it's an even better sign when you consider the fact that she has double my kills. Um, and also, she just lost 10 stacks of her Magis because of that death. So this is overall a pretty huge deal. Uh, here, uh, what's happening is the enemy team is basically going for Dragon. Draven is just getting picked up. By the way, we have a Draven mid who's 0 and 9 at the moment uh, with a man immune first item, in case you guys didn't uh, notice, which probably did. Uh, but yeah, we have uh, that, that particular situation. So uh, yeah, definitely going to be a really difficult game to play. And um, in this kind of matchup, even though Draven is like 0 and 9, he's still a free kill for Katarina to stack her Magi's, which is kind of the issue here. Uh, Draven completely uh, cannot fight Katarina whatsoever. Um, honestly, even if he cancels her ulti with her E, with his E, he's still probably going to die. So it, it's basically free farming for Katarina's Magi stacks, whether she gets kills or assists on Draven. And uh, it's just a kind of a disaster overall in that aspect. So... Um, in the meanwhile, of course, all we are trying to do is stay alive and carry our team um, in the back line. We never really want to be in the front in any situation because if we get caught up by Varus ult, by Alistair combo, by Katarina herself, by a combination of any of these, Yone ult, whatever it is, uh, you know, we're going to be in trouble. So here, you can see, uh, despite the fight breaking out, I'm clearing the wave. And I'm going to explain why we're going to do that in a while. But here you can see Katarina. Importantly, here she has her crown up. I'm not actually uh, um, using spells on her, so I don't proc her crown. Then I kill her, I kill Varus, and now I'm moving on to Alistar, sidestepping the Yone out. Uh, but here, honestly, it's not too much I can do. I try to flash away, I try to use my range, but Yone is able to clip me with the tip of his Q, and I do end up going down uh, to the Yone eventually. But after a really pretty valiant fight, if I do say so myself, and I'm able to pick up my IE, uh, as well as a um, the uh, Executioner's Calling after that. So two important things to note in that fight here. First up is, I cleared the minion wave before the fight. Now why am I focusing minions when there's a fight? Well basically, that minion wave was so huge that it basically constituted to a, like another champion. So if I don't clear that minion wave before the fight, any team basically has an extra champion on their team uh, against us. Whereas I can easily clear the minion wave with my Q and my, uh, and my magnetic blaster auto, so that's exactly what I did. Now, second important thing I did there is to only auto attack Katarina and not use spells. If I E her, if I Q her, um, you know, it's going to proc her, her crown. And 
Proccing her crown basically is going to mean that she's going to take 70% less damage for 1.5 seconds, and we don't want that. So we're just going to purely auto attack her, of course, as an, as an ADC. That's a very key advantage that we have against crown users, which is most ADCs can afford to not use spells and just auto attack. Of course, if you're like a Lucian or an Ezreal, the story is a little bit different. But if you're just a general uh, hyper carry ADC or like a general auto attacker, you can just go ahead and attack without, uh, without using your spells at all. So here, Yone tries to go in. We are able to pop him um, fast enough. And uh, you can see here that we're slowly starting to kind of take over the game so long as Katarina is not able to kill us. And so far, she hasn't really been able to focus us aside from the few Tara dives that she tried to carry out on us, which was not successful. We haven't actually died to Katarina the whole game. So here Gwen is pretty overextended, we're trying to uh, uh, kill her and we do, uh, we are able to punish the overextension and Timo is able to survive as well. So this uh, ends up going really really well. Um, the, the, pretty much the chain of events here has been going pretty pretty well and uh, you know we're in a pretty good spot here. We're, we are way more fat than the Katarina at this point and we just need to keep ourselves away from her. Of course we don't have any kind of safety tools, we don't have our, our stasis, we don't really have anything. Generally nowadays, it's, it's best to buy your enchantment only when you're, you reach like 4 items because you want to rush the 100% crit as fast as possible. Although, if you are really fed and you need the stasis to survive, you can of course go for that earlier. And this is one of those kind of cases that going for a stasis here would make sense. Uh, but of course, also Maul Reminder makes a lot of sense as well. Of, of course, to shred Alistar and just to get the 100% crit, uh, you know, etc. Um, so speaking of which, we are going to complete Moral Reminder and we're going to go for Stasis next item before we get to our last item, um, which in this case, could be a, it could be a Maul because there is of course Katarina and, and there's also like Gwen and Yone who does a little bit of AP damage. Varysna is a crown as well, so he's also going to be doing some AP damage, so a, a lot of Maul value. But in this particular game, I actually chose to build towards... Uh, Garden Angel and the main reason why I chose to do this is because I'm still really afraid of the Katarina Now if Katarina one shots me without me doing anything Then I'm really gonna need that GA to keep myself back uh, to get myself back alive and put myself in a position where I can Do something so I felt that GA here was really good for just purely for the revive not really for the stats or anything like that But Ma would be really good in this spot as well In fact, you could even argue that crown here is not really bad because you can block Katarina's combo with Maw. So anyways here the next dragon is actually coming up. Now we don't really care so much about the dragon but I'm really using this opportunity to, tr opportunity to try to get a good team fight. So you can see here I'm not even attacking the dragon. I don't care. Varus whiffs and ult. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can kill anybody. So here uh, Master is trying to run down Varus. I get a huge auto on the Varus. I pop the ghost and I'm just trying to focus wherever I can. Alistair isn't the first target. Yone ult doesn't really quite hit me. I'm focusing Katarina. Katarina dies. And now I'm going to focus the next target, which is Alistar. Full stack lethal tempo, flashing forward, getting the kill. Yone is now stuck in trouble. I put a trap behind him, so he has to go forward to attack me. And I'm going to just eat away and finish the fight um, onto the Yone. So off of that, we can not only get the dragon, but we can also get the Baron. So here I'm pinging for Baron with Master Yi. So we can two-man the Baron, and we can easily just, you know, pick it up. So here, important once again is... I do more damage than Master Yi, so I'm not starting the, the Baron until he gets here, which is going to give me the opportunity to, uh, of course, deal full damage to the Baron instead of getting the debuff, which causes to to uh, only t do 50% damage. Also setting up the trap line, although there's really unlikely that en any enemy really comes up here before we finish it off, but you know, better to be safe than sorry. And we are able to finish off the Baron for our team. So now we're at a really advantageous um, position now, we're gonna back, we're gonna pick up our stasis of course and as I mentioned I'm gonna build towards GA so I'm gonna pick up the BF sword, another huge injection of AD for us. Now at this point you can see that we're doing insane amounts of damage against Katarina cause she's incredibly squishy despite being very fed. Same can be said for me though, so basically it's who can kill the other faster and so far I've been winning cause Katarina has not been focusing me. Of course this is a lot to do with the fact that Caitlyn has the, has the longest range in the game. And also, of course, due to the fact that I have the mag Magnetic Blaster. So here I'm getting a free auto onto Katarina. I can see that it does a almost a third of her, her, of her HP. So that is, of course, uh, you know, do does a lot of damage and pokes her out, which of course makes her more vulnerable to going in. Now here, again, I'm trying to use my range to poke. Another sidestep on the Varus ult. Varus has not been good at hitting these ults. I think I've dodged, like, actually, I think I've dodged all of them. I don't think I've actually been hit by Varus ult so far, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so he's really bad at hitting his ults. Anyways, here with the range, we can focus down the tower, 
get the free mid lane inhibitor and Elder Dragon is actually coming up. So Yone tries to go for a really rich flank, but you have to remember Yone is their jungler here. So if we actually get a fight and run him down, he, he's going to lose the dragon for his team. Whereas Armasty is kind of doing the same thing by jumping into the enemy team. Now here he, uh, we find him caught out and he is down. Master Yi is a little bit low on health, he's about half HP at the moment. But without their jungler, it's going to be really hard to contest Elder Dragon. Now the only thing that could go wrong here is Katarina jumps in, gets reset on everybody and wipes the whole team and gets the Elder Dragon steal as well. Uh, but that's pretty unlikely, so we're just going to focus down the Elder Dragon. Gwen tries to uh, snipe it with her ulti over the wall, but doesn't really work out. Uh, also makes it such that Gwen ulti is now down. So here now with the, the Elder Dragon, now we're trying to push. Now here I'm actually pinging to push top because mid doesn't have in hit. There's no point really pushing mid unless we're going for the end, which is not the case. Master Yi and I get spotted by the Poro, but it's too late because Gwen is very obviously in that bush. Can't be anywhere else. So we get a free pick onto the Gwen with the Elder buff, of course. And uh, at this point, we're just trying to desync the enemy team's uh, like respawn timer. So now Gwen's down, but Yone is reviving. Uh, so we are always at a disadvantage. Here Yone tries to ult again. Once again, I just step to the side. Elder Dragon buff helps us to finish him off. Here Alistair tries to go in on us, um, but you know there's no follow-up at all. So here, once again, I'm just free hitting onto the Alistar. I'm doing no damage to the Alistar, by the way, because he is super tanky with the LT, but Elder Dragon finishes him off. Finishes off the Varus and the Katarina as well. Now, let's look at that Katarina damage. When she finally jumps in on me, that's the kind of damage that she can do. So thankfully, she has not been able to do that for the entire rest of the match. Now we're just going to focus on Nexus and pick up the dub. So I'm going to leave you guys with the stats as usual. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and goodbye.